very, very, very grateful for the Ak um, by the name of Ikan Ben Naja. He has been dropping mad precepts. So we're going to precept from the Quran as to why the Arabic slave trade began to take place. Mischief has appeared on the land and sea because of that hands of men have earned that Allah may give them a taste of some of their own deeds in order that they may turn back. Turning back is repentance in parentheses, it says from evil. Behold, thy Lord did declare that he would sin against them to the day of judgment, those who would inflict them with grievous penalty. Thy Lord is quick in retribution, but he is also all forgiving, most merciful. After this, is it ye? The same people who slay among yourself and banish a party of you from their homes, assist their enemies against them in guilt and rancor. And if they come to you as captives, you ransom them, though it was not lawful for you to banish them. Then is it only a part of the book that ye believe in? And do you reject the rest? We broke and scattered them up into sections of the earth. There are among them some that are righteous and some that are the opposite. We have tried them with both prosperity and adversity in order that they might turn to us. This is Sarah 30, 41, 7, 167, 2, 85, 7, and 168. There is also another precept from the Quran to begin to precept um, when it comes to Deuteronomy 18 and 18. So this prophecy, Deuteronomy 18, I'm going to read it from the 15th verse. We have to begin to realize that this is in context. So this would be applicable to the Israelites and the Ishmaelites. The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee of thy brother like unto me unto him ye shall hearken according to all that thou desirest of the lord thy god in horror in the day of the assembly saying let me not hear again the voice of the lord my god neither let one of let me see this great fire any more, that i die not and the lord said unto me they have well spoken that which they have spoken I will raise up a prophet from among their brother like unto thee, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I command him. So let's go to Isaiah 42. Now we know that Joshua was raised up as a prophet. We also have to think biblically who our brother is called. And we know our brother is called Ishmael and Esau. Now, when we begin to look at Isaiah 42, we know that this is highly applicable to Cyrus. This entire um, chapter of Isaiah is not about Cyrus at all. Um, so when we begin to scroll down to sing unto the Lord a new song and his praise from the end of the earth. Ye that go down to the sea and all that is therein, the isles and inhabitants thereof, let the wilderness and the cities thereof lift up their voice. The village that Kadar and Kadar is a son of Ishmael and the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is a descendant of Kadar. Both inhabit. Let the inhabitants of the rock sing. Let them shout from the top of the mountains. We have to be aware that Qadar inhabited the Arabian Peninsula. And this is where the polytheistic um, Arabs were. And because of their worship, they were considered to be Gentiles. Yahushua never went into the desert. Cyrus was not in the desert. Let the inhabitants of the rock sing. Let them shout from the top of the mountains. Let them give glory unto the Lord and declare his praise in the islands. The Lord shall go forth as mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry, ye war. He shall prevail against his enemies. I have long time holding my peace. I have still and refrain myself. Now I will cry like a travailing woman. I will destroy, devour at once. I will make waste mountains and hills and dry up all the herbs and I will make the rivers islands and I will dry up the pools and I will bring the blind by the way that they knew not. I will lead them in paths 
that they have not known. I will make darkness light before them and crooked things straight. These things will I do unto them and not forsake them. They shall be turned back. See, they shall go to repentance. They shall be greatly ashamed that trust in graven images that say to the molded images, ye are gods. And you have to realize that when Mohammed came um, in 6th century AD, he literally came with the message of the Ebionites, with the message of the poor, to begin to rid of polytheism, to begin to show the truth about Yahushua like the first century um, Israelites attempted to do, denying his deification, exposing Paul as a false prophet, and getting us back to the worship of one Elohim only, according to the Shema. Shema Israel Adonai Echad Adonai Eloheinu. So he was able to successfully convert a lot of Israelites back to the oneness of the Most High. And those that rejected him are the ones that began to pin that he was a false prophet. He was crazy. He was this. He was that. That's the same thing that they do did to James the Just, to Peter, to Matthew, to Barnabas, so on and so forth. The true disciples of Yahushua. And as we read down, we will see that the Most High is like, oh, you're saying he's blind. He don't, he don't see me. You're saying he's deaf. He don't hear from me. So when we begin to think about the fact that the Israelites developed, Bilal Danites developed um, the call to prayer alongside Muhammad with the Soniki, who are called Moors, with the Mendi, with the Mali, with the Mandinka, with the Fan people. This was a continuation of the Solomonic dynasty. And Bilal the Danite was actually fleeing slavery from the Umad Caliphate, who were known to be polytheistics. So when we began to think about the Yoruba, and we always said that they fled from Morocco and Mauritano and woo 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 because they didn't want to be converted to Islam. This is actually because the Umar Caliphate, who was attempting to convert them, they were not Islamic. They were polytheistics. And they actually came down into um, West Africa where Mohammed and all of these Israelite tribes were to find Bilal the Danite because his mother was a continuation of the Solomonic dynasty through Queen Sheba. She was the, the, the princess of the um, Abyssinian dynasty. This is your Ethiopian Jews, so on and so forth. And so when Bilal the Danite did not rejoin the polytheistic caliphate, he beat him and he wanted him to deny the oneness of the Most High. And he passed away, said, Ekad Allah, Akad Allah, Ekad Allah. And this literally means Ekad Elohim, Ekad Elohim. He was declaring and decreeing that there was one God. We have been mistaught concerning our brothers Ishmael and Esau. And this is due to the fact that after the death of the prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, there was a split in Islam, which he begins to teach against. And I'll come back and share more of that as well. We have to be aware that our Islamic brothers and sisters, they keep Torah. The Quran is full of precepts warning us about the deception that we would go into. They also use the Apocrypha books from the BC times and after Christ, which is why their stories differ from the New Testament because they are closer in relation to the Syriac versions of the Gospels, void of the Apostle Paul books. Um, so when we begin to think about the fact that when Muhammad came in, he originally kept the feast days with the Israelites. He began to keep feast of um, Day of Atonement by fasting on the 10th day. And they would pray towards Jerusalem. It was when they rejected him that he, after 18 months of servitude, of conversion, of trying to get along with the Israelites and them calling him crazy. Not all of them, because you see how many um, Negroes are Islam, Islamic. And so when they started to reject him, that's when he turned towards the Kaaba to begin to pray. But he went into the Kaaba to rid it of its idol gods. And that's when he went to the Gentiles in Qadar to begin to convert the polytheistic Arabic nations, just as Selah did, the father of Eber, 
who was the grandfather of Hagar. Now, when we began to look into um, the Sarah chapter three, verse one, 59, it begins to say, it is out of Allah's mercy that you, O prophet, have been lenient with them. Had you been cruel or hardened heart, they would have certainly abandoned you. So pardon them, ask Allah's forgiveness for them and consult with them in conducting matters. Once you have make, once you make a decision, put your trust in Allah. Surely Allah loves those who he trusts. This is um, Sarai 61 and 9. He is the one who was sent his messenger with true guidance and the religion of the truth, making it prevail over all others, even to the dismay of the polytheists. This is to the Gentiles. When we begin to look at the word Muhammad, it is found in Song of Solomon 516. And many people will continue to put the cod in there. We have to begin to click on it and see that it is spelled literally Muhammad without the C. H and it means desirable, sweet. It is very important to know that the word Mishlam is also found in Isaiah 42, and this is denoting as perfect, righteous. The word Iman goes back to Emmanuel, symbolizing that God is with us. Line up on line, precept on precept. So when we begin to precept Deuteronomy 18, 15 through 18, um, the brother Akan Iban Yah, he began to put this from the Quran. The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, and thy brethren Benu Hashem have Ishmaelite and have Israelite. Banu Nejar, many sons of the carpenter tribe. This is from Judah. Because who was the carpenter? Yosef. Joseph, which begins to tell you that Yahushua's genealogy, in fact, went through his father, Joseph. Liken unto thee, I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I command him. So this is Jacolia of Jacolia Gems. Let's all come back to the oneness of Elohim. Shema Israel Adonai Echad Adonai Eloheinu. Sorry, y'all. I forgot to read down um, in Deuteronomy 42. And so this is when the Most High was letting it be made known that he would be rejected. Hear ye deaf and look ye blind that ye may see. Who was blind but my servant, or deaf as my messenger that I sent? Who was blind as he that is perfect? This is what Islam means. This is, I mean, Muslim, and blind as the Lord's servant. Saying many things, but thou observest not. Opening the ears, but he heareth not. The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake. He will magnify the law and make it honorable. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes and they are hid in prison houses. They are for a prey and none delivered for a spoil. And none saith restore. Who among you will give ear to this? Who will hearken and hear for the time to come? Who gave Israel for a spoil and I... I'm sorry, who gave Jacob for a spoil in Israel to the robbers? Did not the Lord, he against whom ye have sinned? See, this is talking about them being scattered by this prophet in Qadar. For they would not walk in his ways. They didn't want to listen to Muhammad. Neither were they obedient unto his law. See, there's the law of Moses. There's a law with Abraham, the most high baby. Therefore, he hath poured upon him the fury of his anger and strength of the battle, and it has set him on fire round about, yet he knew not, and it burned him, yet he laid it not to heart. Let me see. It's a scripture in. Let me see if I can find this, because I don't want to make this video long. Um, Ishmael. If I can't find the scripture real quick, I'm going to just come back. I thought I'm like ready to actually do a lesson on this. Um, Joel.
Joel 3. Thank you, Holy Spirit. <laughs> okay. This is a long scripture. Okay. This is talking about a scattering off. For behold, in those days and in that time when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem. And this is why some people begin to teach that we're going to go into captivity again. Uh, I'm not here to talk about that. I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them there for my people and my heritage, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my lands. Um, and then some, many, some people say that this is the captivity being turned back. This is the second exodus. I'm not here to teach right now on, on none of that. And they have cast lots for my people and have given a boy for an harlot and sold a girl for wine that they may drink. What's talking about now in, in, in the media? Yea, and what have ye to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon and all the coast of the Palestine? See, this is Palestine. Palestine is Philistine. And so y'all see what's going over there today. The native Philistines was ran out in 1000 BC by King David. And they were um, Arabianized by, I believe, Muhammad. And so then what you see in Palestine today are the Ishmaelites, are some Edomites and a gang of Israelites. Will ye render me a recompense? And if you recompense me swiftly and speedily, will I return your recompense upon your own head? Because ye have taken my silver and my gold and have carried into your temples my goodly pleasure things. The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have ye sold unto the Grecians that ye might remove them from their border. See, this is when they sold us clearly to the Greeks. This Bible is alive. Behold, I will raise them out of their place, whether ye have sold them and will return your own recompense upon your own head. And I will sell your sons and your daughters into the hand of the children of Judah, and they shall sell them to the Sabines. Now, the Sabines are the Ethiopians from Cush. There's also some Sheba from um, the seed line of Shem as, all, as well. To a people far off, for the Lord has spoken it. Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles, the polytheistics, the nations, prepare war, wake up mighty men, all, let all them men of war draw near. Let them come up, beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning blocks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Assemble yourself and come all ye heathen and gather yourselves together round about thither calls thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord. Let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. For there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. Put ye the sickle for the harvest is ripe. This is the the the, the grape wine press. This is during the season of Shavuot. This is between the wheat and the tares. When one will be taken and one will be left. For the press is full and the fats overflow and their wickedness is great. This is due to the fact of the cup of iniquity. What is iniquity? Iniquity is lawlessness. What is sin? Sin is transgressing the law. So when you get someone like Paul coming in to teach doctrine of demons that grace is now implemented, this is lawlessness. And this is how you know that he's a Roman Catholic agent and when you begin to think about the fact that the cup of iniquity is overflowing this is so that they can usher in their messiah which is the anti-messiah how is the anti-messiah described he is described as having one eye it was left out of torah on purpose that the benjaminites got their eyes plucked out surely was you can also become a benjaminite or any tribe due to 
conversion. Benjamin is described as being a ravenous wolf. Yahushua began to warn the first century Israelite against those who would be wolves in sheep clothing. Who began to say that he was from the tribe of Benjamin? Who be, he also began to say that someone will go around working miracles in his name, but they will be workers of iniquity. And he going to literally say, I don't even know you. Depart from me. Who was going around doing miracles in his name and who was promoting iniquity and who tribe had one eye? None other than yours truly, Paul. Or who the first century Israelites or the Ebionites began to address as Simon the Magus. When I dropped that video yesterday, I don't have a whole bunch of views on it. I'm going to put it back. I'm going to put it in the comments. You guys need to read that. Simon the Magus is identified as Simon of Cyrene by Irenaeus, from whom all heresies flow. Now, we also need to know that the word Gnosticism literally just means knowledge. And a lot of Israelites were part of Gnostic um teachings there's a big difference between gnosticism paganism and then some of these groups were being gnostics because they told the truth about the birth crucifixion and resurrection and they began to be called gnostics in 325 a.d by the the roman catholics who came in to subjugate the bible but they were not originally known as gnostics so when you see simon of Cyrene being equated to Simon the Magus. And Simon the Magus is the one who said that he appeared as the son of God in Judea. And he is the one who appeared to have died and resurrected. I mean, he was the one who was crucified. And so then when you begin to see that the Ebionites or the first century Israelites identified Paul as the as Simon the Magus, this should begin to tell you something about not only his writings, but the book of Acts, the book of Luke's and everything that he was teaching about with the deification of Yahushua. And so when we begin to read the New Testament and we see it begins to say that Simon the Magus took the cross. So the Bible talk about Simon the Magus taking the cross. Irenaeus identifies Simon the Magus as Simon of Cyrene. Um, Paul began to push people to the crucified Christ, to the descended for three days Christ and the resurrected Christ. He is pushing people to himself. It's literally scriptures that I'm come back and read when Paul said that he was to be a light to the Gentiles. All false doctrine. All false doctrine. So when we begin to read our Bible and line up scholarship. We should be able to know and to begin to prove history. So I hope that this helped you guys precept and realize that there are much more things that meet the eye when it comes to the law, statutes, commandments, and the oneness. And we really have to come up out of the Greek New Testament in the way that we have been taught. This is Jacoby of Jacoby Jams.